Still more criticism against Limpopo Health MEC Dr. Popi Ramatuba for her treatment of a patient at a hospital in Belabela. The health MEC was filmed telling the woman that migrants are straining the provincial health system. However, according to the DA and the province department's audit, results paint a very different picture. Well, some of the reports suggest that medico-legal claims against the department have skyrocketed into the billions of rands. For more on this, let's talk to the DA in the province's Lindy Wilson. A very Good afternoon to you, ma'am. Welcome to the program. So if the issue of migration has put such strain on healthcare services in Limpopo, why has government failed to put an end to it? Well, I think what we must do is start with the reality. Okay, so so let's look at at the Department of Health in the province. So 75% of their budget is spent on staffing, but they still have a massive vacancy rate. The medical legal claims to date are 14 billion rand, um, which the MEC herself has said is as a result of understaffing and lack of infrastructure. This department has spent 500 million on scanning and storing of documentation on the tender, which at the close of that tender will be 1 billion rand. They are a department that faced uh, millions in PPE corruption. They've got 4,000 surgery backlogs, and the waiting list for oncology is over a year. And I think the reality of the situation here is that the entire health system in the province, and a lot of other provinces, has collapsed. You cannot blame foreign nationals for this. That is mismanagement and maladministration. So the fact that she is blaming a foreign national for this is out of line, unfair, and unjustified. On top of that, she says in, in this video that, you know, her budget only caters for the local population. Well, my argument to that is, is that thousands of people from Gauteng, Mpumalanga and the Northwest flock into Limpopo hospitals on a daily basis. If indeed her budget only caters for her population in her province, is she applying the same rules to those people who are coming in from other provinces? Um, I, I think she's completely out of line. You cannot blame foreign nationals for your own inadequacies, your own maladministration and poor management. Well, the MEC says that uh, people who are in the country who are foreign nationals legally or illegally in the country will not be denied emergency treatment. The issue is that, for example, when they come forward for uh, elective surgeries, etc., and that's where, if they're not going to pay, they will not be treated. So if, let's say, the department were to stop assisting them on that aspect, how much pressure would it take on, off the system, as you're saying, 4,000 plus, that's how long the waiting list for surgeries is? Well, I, I hear what you're saying, and, and this is something that the DA has been raising for a long time. The fact that our borders are so porous, um, so badly managed. I mean, Patricia DeLille's washing line is, is, a, is a good example. So until such time as proper um, infrastructure is put in place to deal with our, our porous borders, we are going to continue to struggle. And just on... The medical claims, I think we've lost Lindy Wilson, have we? Lindy, I'm told we have you back. You were just making the point about the link between managing the borders and ultimately what happens at hospital level and why if the borders aren't secure, then the healthcare system does not stand a chance. Well, we've raised this. We, the porous borders and the DA has been fighting about this for a very long time. Our border management is shocking. Um, we have our washing line to stop people coming in from the Zimbabwean side. Um, but the fact remains, is, and we've raised this with the Department of Health, I don't know how many times, is that you, they do a budget catering for the um, population of South Africa. And yet it is common knowledge that there is at least, at least 12 to 15 million more foreign nationals in this country. They are, they are not all here illegally. They are not all here illegally. Now, the, we have international regulations or, or agreements that we've signed where we have to treat people. Um, and and you, you talk about this lady having elective surgery. Well, you know, she doesn't explain what surgery that lady's had and if indeed it is elective surgery. Um, one is shoes. 
she creates the assumption that it is, but we actually don't know what that lady is in there for. Um, so, you know, and, and, and I think two other things stood out for me. Number one, she was doing this in front of her staff who were laughing and, and, and thought that, you know, she was being very funny. That was both humiliating and demeaning to the lady in question, and I think that was out of line. And she also said, you detain them. She doesn't. She says, you do not release this person until such time as they fail. In other words, you will detain her. Now, again, does she have the right to detain anybody? Is that her mandate? So everything about the situation is wrong. So another issue, I recall a few years ago, two, three years ago, when in Limpopo, a group of people who had been uh, student nurses basically had to take the department to court. At the time, they were saying, well, we had come in, I think they'd been on government bursaries, came in as student nurses, and then were let go. And at the time, the department basically said it simply could not afford to keep them on. And you wonder how you balance those issues then, a system that's said to be under pressure, yet has no money to keep essential stuff on. Well, I think that's exactly where we're sitting at. Um, health in, in South Africa at the moment is severely, and I mean severely, underfunded. Um, and what is happening in Limpopo is happening the country over. It's happening in almost every other province. And this is not being addressed. Um, and unfortunately, the the, our economic situation in this country, which is absolutely dire, and South Africa is sitting on on a, a fiscal cliff, this we know, is not helping the situation. And it's a situation that must be addressed. And, and not at, the, at provincial le- level, from the president down, the situation is dire. We are in trouble. Um, and, you know, we mustn't blame other people for the situation. And, and people do say it's xenophobic. I, I agree that there is a, a, you know, it does incite a bit of xenophobia. But if we cannot re- address our crisis at a, a, at a higher level, we can't expect these things to be corrected at a provincial level. And what do you think is the solution? I mean, the EFF has, for example, put out a statement saying, in fact, the health MEC, Dr. Ramatuba, should be fired for her conduct in that video. How much do you think that would help in taking Limbopo in the direction of a solution? Look, as far as I'm concerned, and I've had dealings with the MEC over the years, I do sit on the National Portfolio of Health. I think, number one, I think her, her, her video was shocking and embarrassing to South Africa, and on those grounds that I think that she should be fired. Um, but, if you, you know, it's one thing to fire an MEC. Who do you replace her with? Um, another CADA, because these, we, know, we know what CADA deployment does in this country. And will it alleviate the, the budgeting restraints, the lack of infrastructure, the lack of, of, of nursing, doctors, specialists? With the kind of budgets that they've got at the moment, unless somebody pulls the mismanagement into line, stops the corruption, um, employing doctors and specialists at the highest rates possible because they're mates of ours, I don't know that you're going to alleviate it any time soon. There was also another issue raised by some of the people who were critical of the MEC online saying that the concern is that the way in which she addressed the woman who was a patient at the hospital may in fact inspire to a degree some hospital staff, nurses, doctors to speak in the same way to people who may or may not be in the country illegally. Do you share that concern? Oh, I absolutely do. You know, <laughs> leaders of the country, uh, NECs, the president, downwards. It is their job to lead by example. And if this is the example that you have set, and you have your doctors and nurses in the background thinking this is very funny, while she humiliates and demeans this person, well, then that's exactly what's going to happen. And we know that this happens. Um, and I think her conduct was absolutely shameful. But there are also people, Lindy, who've been supportive of the MEC who say, in fact, she should be applauded for being brave enough to address the elephant in the room and call out a problem in the system. And therefore, they believe that's even more reason for her to stay on and continue to raise this very issue. You know, there's ways and means of doing this. And and there's many ways, as they say, to skin a cat. You do it in a proper manner, in a proper fashion, at the right um, levels, um, and, and you, you deal with these matters appropriately. You don't do it by demeaning this lady who's lying in the hospital with people watching on um, and going out, you know, with, visually with it. Um, I'm sorry, I, the way she handled it was wrong. Yes, there is an elephant in the room. 
And it's not in a, a really an elephant in the room. Everybody knows about it. But we deal with these things within the proper structures in the right manner. And we do it with class. And I'm afraid she did not do it with any class at all. In those structures then, should Zimbabwe be held accountable? And I wonder in what way for the situation? Well, you know, we had a situation many years ago, and it, it, it basically should, I, I don't know if it still applies, I have to be honest, where, where we treated foreign nationals um, or assisted them or, you know, had to, had to treat them for whatever reason, that the, the, the countries from which they came from were actually billed for those services. But we're sitting with, you know, we're talking about a country like Zimbabwe that is absolutely, totally and utterly bankrupt and not la- not in a position to pay for those services. So, you know, it's a catch-22. Um, it's a catch-22. I, I don't know that I have the answer to that, not without, you know, giving it reasonable consideration. Lindy Wilson from the Democratic Alliance in Limpopo, thank you for your time today, ma'am.